Can I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Narden Park. Welcome, 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 everyone who has joined us either online or in person. I have the same question for each of you, whether you're here or you're ringing your phone. And that is, how is it with your soul this morning? It is well. I'm glad to hear that. It is well with mine as well. I'm so glad you're able to come and join with us to share in prayer, song, and praise of our Lord God, because today is the 25th Sunday after the Pentecost, almost the end of the liturgical year. So certainly, today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and... Be glad. Be glad in it. Amen. As we prepare to go forward today with our pledge cards, if you haven't turned your, I haven't brought yours in from home, ready to turn it in today, don't worry. In your bulletins, you will find a little pink card that you can fill in just in time to join everybody else as we're turning in our pledge cards. And Mike will have more on that d detail in a moment. Now, as honored in the countdown video that you just saw, tomorrow is Veterans Day. Uh, and we're going to celebrate that in just a moment with a special prayer. But first, uh, I'd like to share a couple of quick announcements. First, we're asking everyone to please return your collection bags with donations today for the Harvest Luncheon, which will come up right after today's worship. Everyone, I mean everyone, is welcome to the potluck after today's service as we celebrate this stewardship campaign. Now, next Sunday, November 17th, there will be an information session after the 11 a.m. service to discuss, quote-unquote, celebration of my life. It's a booklet led by the Congregational Care Team. More on that later. Also, Operation Common Good has partnered with Farmington Youth Assistance to provide gifts to young people ages 10 to 18. Now, we at Narden Park have been one of their biggest supporters over the years, and they've asked once again for our help. The gifts need to be returned here no later than Sunday, December 8th. There's more information with a link to sign up to this on our website. Of course, that's nardenpark.org. And along with that will be many other upcoming events online during this hour. Don't forget, Thanksgiving is coming up before you know it. And then, of course, what's right after that is the Christmas season. Our Advent season will be kicking off before you know it. All that information is, is on our website. Oh, and one other quick note. At the Welcome Center, Arlene would be glad to take your signature for signing up for volunteers for Crossroads. Now, as I mentioned, we are honoring, since tomorrow is the true Veterans Day, today we're honoring the veterans here who are part of our congregation. Tell me, if you or a member of your family has ever served in the military, we invite you to stand now as able, just for a moment. Could we st stand and be recognized? Please remain standing as, as we go to the Lord in prayer, a brief prayer for the support of veterans and their families. O oh God of peace, on this Veterans Day weekend, we give you thanks for all who have served our country in the armed forces. We honor their courage, their sacrifice, and their willingness to put themselves in harm's way to protect our freedoms. Oh Lord, we, we pray for those who still bear the wounds of war, both visible and invisible. We ask, Lord, that you grant them healing and peace. And indeed, Lord, also offer comfort to the families of those who have fallen. And especially, Lord, we ask that you guide our nation toward paths of peace and justice. That the sacrifices made by our veterans may lead to a world where all may live in safety and security. 
In, na- in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, we pray, amen. Now, if you'd like to all stand up and join these people in that standing and turn to each other and share a moment of, sh- of greetings to your neighbor beside you. Turn to your left, turn to your right. Peace be with you. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Let us please remain standing, but return to our seats. Let us return to our seats now and we remain standing as Dorcas leads us in the call to worship. No, I don't think I need this. Good morning. And before I begin, thank you to all of the veterans for your service. We really appreciate it. Our call, if you would please join me for your call, our call to worship. Dear Heavenly Father, we long to see ourselves as you see us. We are to look your eyes and envision who you create us to be. Help us love ourselves that we may truly love others. Oh God, oh God help, help us to freely give from our bounty in the same way you have so graciously given to us, so we may rejoice in the gifts of others, even when they seem small by comparison, because the smallest gift is still precious to God. Thanks be to God. Please, amen. Please remain standing for our opening hymn.
time for our offering. You will find ways to give on the slide. That you may text your offering to the number that's shown on the slide. You may send your offering to nardenpark.org, or you may mail a check, and you may place your offering in the plate that the offers will, that the ushers will pass. If the ushers will please come forward. Thank you. And now if the ushers could come forward along with our bucket bearers, let us all stand and join together in the doxology. <laughs> Oh 
Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. O oh Lord, you graciously pour out your blessings on us. Your gifts surround us. So everything we have is a, is a gift from your hand. Help us, O oh Lord, to loosen our hands, giving to the work of this church on your behalf. For in giving freely to you, we gain the opportunity to live abundant lives. We pray all this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Mike. My stewardship story. I grew up in a church-going family with parents who participated in only, not only in the church service, but also in the various boards that governed the church operations. Thus, I also participated in the various activities that were available. As I grew up, the participation part was my introduction to the concept of stewardship. Giving and the concept of tithing came with adulthood, adulthood, although being immersed in raising and supporting a family meant that giving was important, but tithing was a far-off concept. With the family grown up and not dependent on their parents financially, the concept of tithing, of taking steps toward tithing, became our goal. The Stepping Stones of Stewardship chart, which is provided be behind your, every card, has been very helpful in guiding us along the path. But for us, tithing is not tied to the financial needs of the church, but rather a spiritual connection with God. Today is that day that we come together in celebration. We come together to share. We give, not in the fear of what we must keep, but in the memory of what we have reaped. Today we give not with condition, but with submission. And today we give not until it hurts, but we give until it heals. We come together as God's people to give back some small portion and commit ourselves to some small portion of doing God's work in the world. So we ask all of you who have come and are here present today to come forward and put your tithe offering into the building here as we continue to praise God and give thanks for the many ways he has blessed us. All of you may come forward.
Father, may these gifts that have been brought forward continue to strengthen your kingdom as we share the gospel message of Jesus Christ. May our hearts be constantly open. May we be forever faithful to our commitment. And may we joyfully give so the light of Christ will be seen not just in our homes, not just in our communities, but around the world. For the blessing of these gifts, we give thanks in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus to Christ. Amen. What a joyful moment to be surrounded by so many cheerful givers. As we prepare to go to the Lord in prayer, I'd like to lift up some names who are on our prayer list that you can find on the whiteboard out in the hallway there or on the email that we receive every week twice. First, I'd like to lift up the family and friends of Bev Notstein, who was for many years a, a, an accomplished accompanist here. She passed away October 29th. Her service will be held at Haney Sunquist Funeral Home next Saturday. That's November 16. Visitation starts at 10 and the service at 11.30. We'd also like to lift up in prayer the family and friends of Jeff Davis. Uh, his memorial service will be here a week later, uh, planned for 11 a.m. Saturday, November 23rd. And we continue to lift up the family and friends of Reverend Karen Poole, who passed away October 22. Uh, her memorial service was held November 1st at Big Rapids First United Methodist Church. Also on that list of prayers out there and online, um, prayers have been requested for the medical concerns of Tom Toby, Kathy Sales, Sandy Davis, Erwin Knox, and Lisa Jackson Smith. And we ask that you pray not just today, here and now, but include them all in your daily prayers throughout the week. So now let us go to the Lord in prayer. O oh God of abundance, we gather here today on this conclusion of our stewardship campaign. Having journeyed together, we have considered your many blessings and the gifts that you have entrusted to us. As our founder, John Wesley, wisely said, gain all you can, save all you can, give all you can. May his words inspire us as we dedicate ourselves anew to faithful giving and living. Oh, Father in heaven, you are the source of all creation and the giver of every good gift. So we thank you for providing for our needs, sustaining us through challenges, and surrounding us with your love. We ask that you help us be the channel of your generosity, sharing your blessings with others. And Son of God, you embodied selfless love and service throughout your ministry. You taught us that true wealth lies in giving of ourselves. Guide us to follow your example, using our time, our talents, and our resources to build your kingdom and serve those in need. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you empower us to be faithful servants, faithful stewards of resources, sharing our resources generously and participating fully in the life of our church. We ask that you fill us with, our, with your wisdom and discernment as we seek to use our gifts to make a difference in the world. Yes, loving God, we thank you for the opportunity to participate in this campaign. We ask that you bless our pledges and offerings, that they may be used for your glory 
and further your work in the world. We dedicate ourselves to being faithful stewards, trusting in your guidance and provisions. Even now, loving God, as, as we lift up those names that were mentioned just moments ago, and for those loved ones not mentioned aloud, O oh Lord God, we know that you know every name of whom we love and for whom we're concerned and for whom we now pray a moment in silence. O oh God and community, holy and one, Hear us now as we pray together out loud using the words that we have been taught by Jesus, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let's please stand as able and sing from the Faith We Sing book, hymn number 2036, Give Thanks. Forty-six chapter, verses 1 through 2, 5 through 8, and verse number 10. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Happy are those who help, is, whose help is in the God of Jacob. Who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, from generation to generation. Praise the Lord. Amen.
Now, before we hear the scripture story today, let's set the scene. Jesus and his apostles were sitting in the holy temple in Jerusalem out in the courtyard. Now, picture this in your mind's eye. This is a, a courtyard that's bigger than a football field. They're sitting near the court of the women. Now, this was only called the court of the women because that was the closest that a woman was ever allowed to get to the inner holy courts and the holy of holies. Now, right next to them, under the colonnades, there were 13 collection boxes called the trumpets because of their shape. Now, each one of them had an allocated purpose specific to support the temple and its work. So picture yourself sitting there with Jesus and his disciples, watching as every day many people would throw in huge contributions. Remember, there was no paper money back then. So just coins. And the larger the coin, the greater its value. So thus... Huge giving made a huge noise that everyone could hear. Then here comes this widow. She tosses in two tiny copper coins worth only a few pennies even in today's currency. So listen how Jesus now uses this as a teaching moment about a personal sacrifice in giving. The story in Mark that comes from Mark 12, verses 41 to 44. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. Then a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called to his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Amen. And know this for certain. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pastor Carter. There is a tithe that binds. You know, we hear plenty about crime and theft, but we don't hear much about generosity unless it's around Thanksgiving or Christmas. But God always has always been generous to God's children, and God has called us to be generous out of our response to God's unconditional love for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth, the med meditation of all of our hearts, be open to your word and your will. We ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. There's a cartoon not too long ago. It shows two boys that were constantly mischievous, and they were leaving the front porch of a neighbor's house. And one of the boys was kind of confused because they both had hands full of cookies. And one boy was surprised, and he kind of had this wondering look on his face. He said, why did the woman give us all these cookies? You know, these kids were rather mischievous. And the other boy very reassuringly said, she gives us cookie not because we're nice, but because she's nice. You see, God doesn't give to us because we're nice. He gives to us because he loves and he's nice. There's a, a tithe that binds and it's all about the nature of giving. 
the nature of giving. Now let's look at these. There's three ways we can express the nature of giving. We give with the back of our hands. We give with closed hands. And we give with open hands. Now the backhand giving is just as you might imagine, just imagine this scene, it's just before Christmas. And there's a businessman and he's bringing all his employees to the front of his office and as they walk into this big office he says he has envelopes spread out on the table with each employee's name on it. And one of the employees comes over to the big office and stands before the desk and the boss looks up and finds the employee's name and lines him up and says, oh, uh, you must be Ed. He said, yes, Mr. Jones, I'm, I'm Ed. So Mr. Jones shoves the envelope at him and mumbles, yeah, well, good, Merry, Merry Christmas. Now, no one needs to draw a big picture to show that that scene, that personal touch, that giving didn't carry much significance. That that giving was, was more demeaning than the power of that, that bonus to do work in the world. Sometimes we are inundated with examples of, 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 of people and, and, and folks who, who work day and night to do for their children or to do for others, especially with their children. They work day and night to, to provide for them, but it lacks one thing or two things. They give them no attention. They don't give them time. So no matter what you're doing, if it doesn't come with an emotional attachment, with, with that spiritual attachment, then it's lost. You know, there are things that take place with us and we believe in giving and it's significant that we do, but these kinds of gestures are more often an insult than they are a help if it's not done with thanksgiving and generosity. It is indeed the spirit in which we give that makes those offerings, those things that we do, work for the body of Christ and for the church as we reach out beyond the walls of this place. Sometimes we have those closed hands. These are, are the calculated gifts. These closed hands are calculated gifts. These are people who give only in the hope of what they will benefit. What's in it for me? I give, but I'm giving only because I'm calculating on what I'm going to get out of this. If I give, will I be in favor? Will I have favor with someone or something? What's in it for me? It's a closed hand gift. There was a, a show on television not, not so long ago. Well, I guess it is long ago for some of the younger people. It was the Bill Cosby show. Yeah, yeah, it's been a long time for some folks. There was a, he had a son, his name was Theo. And uh, Theo had a friend in the neighborhood named Cockroach. Well, what happened was Theo had gotten a, 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 a special invitation, you know, a special ticket to go on a television show. We had won this ticket to dance with this beautiful girl that they saw on television. So Theo and him are standing at the, at the studio door and Theo says, well, uh, looks at the ticket, well, go ahead, cockroach, you can go. Cockroach said, no, no, you go. He said, no, cockroach, you go. He said, no, Theo, you go. So while he was holding the ticket and the door was getting ready to close, cockroach snatched the ticket out of his hand, went through to dance with the young lady. Now, Theo was mad. He goes home and he's taking it out on everybody. He's all upset. And his mother, Claire, finally found out why he was so disjointed. And she told him, next time you give somebody something, make sure you don't want it. That you don't expect anything in return. Sometimes, even in the church, we do things, some of us, not anybody here, but in some of these other churches, they do things because they expect something in return. If I give you this, what's in it for me? I need this favor. You have to do this for me. I do it not because it's for the love of God through Christ. It's because I'm trying to find out what that bottom line is going to be. That backhanded giving that does not honor Christ. That close-handed giving where we have to decide, how is this going to help me? How is this going to work out for me? There was a young man who had a very protective mother and when he went off to school, 
we call them, they call them helicopter parents nowadays. They went off to school and, and uh, she would visit his dorm periodically. And if she saw something that he needed, or if his shirts were worn, or if he needed a new pair of socks, or there was something in his room that needed to be replaced, she would do it. And he didn't think anything of it. This is what his mother does. Well, after four years, he retired and had a job and married a young lady, and they had their first child. And his mother came over to the house with a long list of all the things that she had done for him while he was in college, and she wanted to be paid. This angered the couple so much that they dedicated themselves to paying off this, this debt as soon as possible. It was a loving gesture that turned out to be close-handed service, expecting some kind or something in return. Now there's, there's, there's this young man who was an immigrant. He um, lived on the wrong side of the tracks, and he got a job among people of influence. And there's one particular woman there that he admired for the work that she, she was doing, and, and to show his gratitude, the young man brought to work a nice piece of cake for her. In appreciation, you know, he built up his courage and gave her this cake. The next day, by accident, he happened to see the cake in the trash can. You see, there are backhanded giving those who don't really care, who think that this is not what I needed, this is not what I wanted, why are you doing this to me? They don't consider why it was given, it's just that I didn't want it. So therefore, I just throw it away. There are those who have that open-handed giving, you know, people like Mother Teresa, St. Francis, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and this widow in this biblical passage who gave from their heart their self-sacrifice without any expectation of what they would receive. You know, sometimes it's hard for us to know that we're doing something and we're not going to get anything in return. It sounds easy until you have to apply it. And all of a sudden you realize, you know, sometimes I do wonder what am I going to get out of this. To be able to give without connection, without a string attached. You know, that's that difference between, as, as, as um, uh, Mike Mark said, you know, that's the difference between giving and tithing. See, giving, you think you can just give and decide what you're going to give and when you're going to give it. If this happens, you know, I only give if we get rid of this particular pastor. I only give if you take somebody off of this committee. I'll only give if you do this for me. Versus tithing that says, this is my personal relationship with God. I'm giving out of a personal responsibility. Because of my relationship with God, because what God has done for me, I am doing this in return with no strings attached. You think that's, that's easy? Some people have left the church when the strings that they attach could not be fulfilled. Giving and tithing it's difficult for all of us because we figure we've got to see some results. I want to know how it's going to be used. By faith, we tithe and said, God has blessed us. He has given us his son, the Christ, who died for our sins, who gave us everlasting life, and we in turn are to emulate Jesus Christ. And it's hard to do because sometimes we want to control. We want to see results right now. There's other closed hands. There's that closed hands at Christmas time where a parent bought his child a brand new latest model Xbox. The child looked at it very coldly. He responded, oh well, thanks. I was really expecting a gaming chair with built-in Bluetooth headphones with a massage and a recliner. You see, sometimes it's never enough, no matter how much is given, it's not big enough or it's just not right enough or it's, or it's just not, it's not, not approached with generosity. It's not approached with, with gratitude. 
Sometimes when a gift is given, there's no gratitude for the gift. It's like that cake and it's like that Xbox. You push it to the side or you throw it away because you have no gratitude for the gift that was given. You always want more. Then there are those who get upset and get jealous because someone gave a gift that was larger than theirs or seemed to be more important than theirs and they either decide they want to top that or they want to stop giving altogether. These are close-handed gifts. You know, giving is not a contest. It's not about who gives more than someone else or whose gift is more valid or valuable than someone else's. You know, sometimes it's harder to receive than it is to give. Some people don't want to receive things because they don't want to appear needy when they should be thinking about, I received it because someone thought it was grateful enough. I wanted, they, they were giving it to me and I should be grateful enough to have received it. Sometimes we don't know how to receive things. Sometimes there's a normal temptation to want to give more than someone else or to measure what was given or what we give in relationship to someone or something else. With the back of the hand, sometimes the cheapest evaluations of our religion comes out. You know, sometimes we say, I love the church. You know, I bake, I bake pies for the church. But they ask you, do you go to church? You say, nah. A backhanded giving. Or someone will say, I'm, I, I'm committed to the church. I love every word of the Bible. But do they really read it? Do they explore its meaning? And do they live by the instructions? No, but they say they're devoted because they love the Bible. There again is a backhand acceptance of God through Christ. Sometimes people say, I love Jesus just as much as the next person. Next, as much as the next person? You know, they say, well, if everyone would, would, would follow the Ten Commandments, they would obey the, the Ten Commandments, we'd have real Christianity without knowing the commandments, much less exploring their implications of behavior, they make this statement, and here again is a backhanded gift. Sometimes people deceive themselves, they play games, they try to maintain a public image, speaking what they think is profound wisdom without understanding. We cannot backhand Jesus. We have to have open hands. Like Barnabas, Bartimaeus had open hands. He approached Jesus with open hands, and when he received his sight, he told Jesus, Jesus told him to go because his faith had made him well, but Bartimaeus went, but what he did was he followed Jesus. It was the nature of his going. His going meant to follow Jesus. He opened himself up to Jesus. He received Jesus by giving himself. And we too can receive Jesus by giving ourselves. Our prayers, our talents, our gifts, our service. Without condition. Without what God, not without us expecting what God is going to do for us if we do this. We do it by faith. Some people say it's blind faith. No, it's not blind faith. It's assured faith that know that it reminds us that whatever we do in the name of God through Jesus Christ will work on behalf of the kingdom. Can you imagine Jesus calling a person and holding back on what goodwill is for that person? Can you imagine Jesus carefully calculating his call and giving only partial of what he thinks this person needs? He brought a gift and the gift was himself. So I thank all of you who came today and decided to give, who made that commitment from the heart 
not because of fear of what someone else was doing, not because you didn't want to be left out, not because you didn't want to be criticized, but because you understood what your faith connection was with God through Christ. You understood God's generosity to us, and all you were doing was repaying that generosity to grow the kingdom of Christ. So for all of you, I, I thank you for your steadfastness, steadfastness, fastness, and your loyalty to God through Christ. As he brings the gift of himself, hopefully we will pour out our life as he poured out his life for us that we will give with open-handedness. We will give unconditionally. And we will give and continue to give, not until it hurts, but until it heals. Not out of what we can get out of it, but what God can do with it when he uses us to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. This is the way that we show honor and glory to God by our prayers, our gifts, our talent, and our service. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you to God. Let us stand if you are able, and we will be dismissed. continue to give ourselves without condition, give, con God, give to God without condition, and praise and serve God without condition. This we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and all of God's people said, Amen. and they said, Amen. and they said, Amen. God be with you.
I didn't change that. I wasn't made that. <laughs>